I'd like to welcome everybody again this uh, wonderful Thursday afternoon. And I want to thank you again for joining me sa mga members po ng Praise Revival Center. Thank you very much for you are consist consistently uh, joining me every time dito po sa GEMS. And those of you who are our friends also, I thank you for uh, watching and always listening. Well, this is an important date to me. This is February 18. This is my 43rd spiritual birthday in the Lord. I got born again February 18, 1978. Never realizing na 43 years old na rin sa Panginoon. So I like to thank God for uh, giving me this special year in Him. And uh, it's all by the grace of God. So, <clears throat> right now, I want us to go to our topic. And um, this has to do with watching the signs and the seasons in the last days. But there's a particular topic that I want us to talk about in a while. Now, to everything that has a beginning, there is always an end. This is actually the Hebraic mindset. If there is the first, there must be the second if there is a beginning, there must be an end. This is the thinking of those people who lived during Bible times in Israel. Kapag may simula, in may ending. So even in the natural, we accept it. Pag may simula, in may katapusan. Therefore, this current world had a beginning and so it will have an end. This is scriptural this is bible if uh, this world had a beginning so it will have an end in fact god is the only person who does not have any end he has no beginning he has no end because he is eternal now this truth is kind of hard for us to understand people of finite uh, thinking it's hard for us to comprehend this but we have to accept it uh, by faith. The truth is that uh, God has no beginning and no end. And we have to accept this. We have to believe this in faith. And with regard to our study on the last days, I want us to study about an important subject. And I want us to look into signs and seasons for there will be signs that God will allow us to see leading to the coming of the Lord. And there are things of the end of days that are related to God's important uh, seasons. So I like to talk to you about a particular topic regards the significance of uh, signs and seasons in the relations uh, or relation to the prophetic future. So this is what we will start looking into. Genesis 1.14 And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. Now one of uh, the important things we have to know in our understanding about prophecy is that God has revealed the future right from the beginning. I want us to <clears throat> go to Isaiah 46 verse 10. God says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. So God is not a God who will keep His people or keep things from His people, especially with regards to, uh, to the things that He has stored up for the end of days. There will be some people that God will reveal the future to. One example in the Bible obviously is Daniel. Another one in the New Testament is the book of John, or rather the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. So, kitang kita po natin that God is the revealer of things, especially with regards to the future. And I believe that still God reveals um, uh, to some people about the end of days. So, those of us who are living in the last days uh, will not be surprised 
because everything has already been revealed in the Word of God with regards to the outcome of things in the last days. Hindi tayo ginawang ignorante ng ating Diyos. He has not left us to become ignorant of uh, the things that are coming. Uh, they're all here in the Word of God. All we have to do is study. However, there are things that we need to uh, listen to and closely study like signs and wonders. So God has revealed things uh, from the beginning or the end from the beginning since uh, the time I believe He had created the world. Now what is more interesting here is how things are said in the Hebrew. The word beginning in Hebrew is reshit. Okay? Reshit. This means beginning, yes. It means first cheat, first in rank, or first in order. Now, in relation to this, the English word Genesis speaks of beginning or origin or the start or a birth of something or coming into being. And I want us to make a connection to this. The Jewish people, the Hebrews, called Genesis as Bereshit. That's how they call the book. In beginning, that's the literal meaning of Bereshit. Now, I want you to notice that the word Reshit is there. That's the same word, okay? The only difference is that you find the letter uh, bit there, and this is the letter B in English. You find it in the beginning, but this is the word in, in English. So, in beginning, to point, that, uh, to, point to us that uh, this happens during the time God created the heavens and the earth. So, in beginning, wala pa yung article da sa Bereshit. Okay? So, literally, it goes in beginning. And you find the word Bereshit there. So, taking this in consideration, we can translate the first part of Isaiah 46 verse 10 that says, I make the end known from the beginning in this way. We can actually say it this way. I make the end or the future known from Genesis. It's another way to uh, look into this. What is the beginning of uh, the beginning book of the Bible? Well, obviously Genesis. And the truth is embedded in hidden in the book of Genesis are prophetic things pointing to the end of days. All you have to do, to do is study closely, especially if you, got, if you understand Hebrew and you can read Hebrew and you can see how things are said in Hebrew, the letters and the words that are used. These are things that will help us understand better the future. If uh, you study people like Noah, Enoch, Methuselah, and some others, there are, uh, these are important people that have prophetic significance in the end of days. Jesus, in fact, said that the, the last days will be like the days of Noah and like the days of Lot. You find them all in the book of Genesis. And that is very interesting. So if you like to know the future... Yeah, you study the book of Daniel, you study the book of Revelation, but you go back to Genesis because there are so many things that God has hidden there for us to understand the end of days. So, let's take a closer look. Let, uh, let's go back to signs and wonders and let's uh, take a closer look or closer examination of signs and seasons. I want us to look at the word signs here, okay? Dial to Genesis uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 14. Again, the second half says, Let them serve as signs to mark seasons, days, and years. Let them serve as signs. So let's look at that right now. The word for signs here in Hebrew is oths, okay? Ots, o -T -W, uh, o -T -H -S in uh, English. Now, oaths means uh, signals, signs, omens, and warnings. 
pag sinabi mong oaths, these are signs, signals, uh, omens, and warnings. However, this word points to signals, omens, and warnings and signs in the sense of appearing. Take note of that. Hindi lang sila basta nilabas. There is a sense of appearing. What I mean is that there is something that is about to appear or about to come so that there will be omens, there will be signals, there will be signs and one, uh, warnings about what is soon to appear, what is soon to happen. So these signs are there for the things that are about to appear. Now, what kind of appearing is being pointed out here in Genesis chapter 1.14? Okay, it has to do with what? Signs for what? For to mark seasons, days, and years. And uh, the word seasons there particularly points to the seasons of God, the festivities of God, or the festivals of the Lord, the seven festivals of God. So, with, the, with this appearing, uh, what is uh, being pointed out here, I believe, has to do with the appearing of Jehovah God during one of, it, of the feasts of the Lord or His divinely appointed season or seasons. Now, to us who are living in the last days, I believe this appearing of signs or wonders I believe this points uh, to what? The appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ in the end of days. There will be signs of the Son of Man to point uh, or to help us understand or to warn us that He is coming very soon. So God has revealed the end or the future from Genesis. And in fact, from Genesis chapter 1 already. Now let's talk about seasons. The Hebrew word, you're familiar with this if you're part of Praise Revival Center. The Hebrew word is moedim. That's plural. Singular is moed. So moed means divinely appointed time or God's appointed time for His people to come and meet with Him. Why? Because God is coming down. There is a meeting. There is an appointment between God and His people. And God says, you are to appear before me. He told the people of Israel, the men of Israel, three times a year, you are to appear before me. Because God is also coming down. He is also meeting with uh, the people of Israel. Just like uh, the tent that Moses built, the tabernacle, that is also called as the tabernacle of uh, the feasts of the Lord. The, taber the tent of Moed. And uh, where is the meeting normally? Uh, where, where, where is the meeting normally happening? At the gate of uh, the tabernacle. God will call Moses and the people of Israel. Aaron right there at the gate at, uh, of uh, the tabernacle. And God will speak to him. So... These are the Moed of God. And whenever God speaks to Mo Moses, we know that the glory of God, the Shekinah presence of God comes down to meet with Moses. And so that principle applies to even uh, today. Whenever we come to, into the seven seasons of God, God comes down. Okay. Now the question is, what must God's people do? With regard to his Moed Let's go to Leviticus 23 I'm just laying down some grounds here And I hope to uh, finish What I intend to uh, talk to you About this afternoon Leviticus 23 1-2 The Lord said to Moses Speak to the Israelites And say to them These are my appointed feasts The appointed feasts of the Lord Which you are to proclaim Number one And number two A sacred assemblies new king james and the lord spoke to moses saying speak to the children of israel and say to them the feast of jehovah or the lord which you shall proclaim to be what holy convocation these are my feasts so it's 
they are not the pieces of Israel, but the pieces of the Lord. Well, it's also good for us to look into this because malapit na po ang ating uh, celebration of uh, Passover. Now, going back, the feasts of uh, Yehovah are to be proclaimed. The seasons of uh, Yehovah must be proclaimed. The Moedim of God must be declared. Everybody must learn. Everybody must hear. Everybody must respond. But this um, is to be proclaimed, or these are to be proclaimed as sacred assemblies or holy convocations. Now, the Hebrew word for assemblies or convocation is mikra. Mikra means a formal assembly or a called out formal meeting. It sounds like the Greek ecclesia. Yeah, uh, it's uh, one of the counterparts of uh, this word ecclesia, sa Hebrew. However, there is still another thing that uh, I want us to look into, another meaning to uh, mikra. It means a rehearsal, or more so, or more specifically, a dress rehearsal. So, the feasts of the Lord have future connotations. They are dress rehearsals. These are uh, His seasons. They are dress rehearsals for a future reality or realities or fulfillment. In fact, this is how Pastor Mark Biltz uh, puts it. The festivals were God's appointed times when Israel would go through the dress rehearsals of what was going to happen prophetically in the future. So it's very important for us to study the feasts because they have significance in regards to the future. Now Genesis 1.14 shows what will happen then at the, at the time of the end. You know, many prophets and even the Lord Jesus Christ had spoken something about this. With the unusual cosmic occurrences, uh, we are seeing everything and damning signs along it, like the total uh, solar and lunar eclipses that we had uh, just experienced recently or in recent years. They all fell during the Feast of the Lord. Remember the four blood moons or the tetrad. It happened uh, four times and within two years consecutively. 2013, if I'm right with my memory, 2013 and 2014. They all fall either uh, Passover and Feast of Tabernacles. Two years, tetrad. And uh, th th that is really uh, significant to, uh, to, to people who would like to be students of uh, the end of days. Now, I know some people uh, would disregard this, but God creates seasons. God creates signs in the heavens. And God, I believe, is warning the whole world of the appearing of His Son. And these occurrences cannot happen by accident or uh, coincidences. However, God has marked off everything from the beginning. He is telling this generation about things to come, negative things to come that will be what? Connected to the coming of the Lord. So what must people uh, of God do? Well, we must learn to know the feasts and celebrate the feasts of the Lord. These are not Israel's feasts, but the feasts of God. So they are ours too, our feasts. Therefore, we must uh, call a meeting we must call a, a, a moment to celebrate these occasions, a dress rehearsals. We need to go through them. And uh, we are to practice all the feasts of the Lord or observe them, not in uh, the, the way the Jewish people are doing it right now, uh, based on legalism and rituals and traditions. We are to do it by the Spirit of God. So... Those are things that I want you to understand, and let's move on. And let me take you uh, to uh, the second half of this study tonight. When we know the signs and seasons, the oaths and the moedim, we will not be ignorant about the coming of the Lord. Don't you know that Paul wrote about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? So let's read it, verses 1 through 6. 
Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you brothers are not in darkness so that this day would surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the lights and the sons of the day. We do not belong to the lights or to the darkness. So then let us, be, uh, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. First thing I want you to notice here, that the Thessalonians are a well-informed group of believers. A well-informed group of believers or a well-informed church. These people are not ignorant with times and dates. Okay? Times and dates. Now, some of you will say, it's time and dates, not times and seasons. Well, I want us to uh, look uh, into the King James Version. Why? Because in the Greek, this actually indicates times and seasons. Let's read it from the King James. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. Now, what is interesting in the Greek is that this points to Kronos and Kairos. The word for times here is the word Kronos. And seasons, well, they refer to Kairos. Now, I believe Paul was thinking also in Jewish mentality. So he was talking about what? Oaths and Moedim. He's talking about these things, signs and wonders and the seasons of God. So um, these are very important. Chronos and Kairos pointing to the chrono chronological times and the special seasons in God. So with the Thessalonians, Paul does not need to write to them about this. Why? It is because they know this very well. Look at verse 2. You know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In fact, let's go back to verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for you know very well. You have such a knowledge. You have such an understanding. You are fully informed that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in uh, the night. So take note of this. The Thessalonians have been taught very well by Paul with regards to times and season as they related to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that we too should be the same. Dapat well informed din tayo. nag tayo ng prophecy. We understand what is going to happen. We are aware. We are people who are always watching so that we will not be ignorant of what are the things to come. So we should be the same, especially we are nearing the very coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If these people knew it very well in the first century, what more to us who are living in the 21st century? We need to know more because the, the coming of the Lord is really nearer than their time. That was the first century, and they were already uh, looking forward to the coming of the Lord. Ilang taon palang umalis si Jesus at this time, okay? Maybe 40 years or 35 years. They, they already are looking for His returning. What more today? Over about 2,000 years have already transpired. We need to be like these people. So the Thessalonians are specially taught as regards the coming of the Lord, that it will come like a thief in the night. So the Thessalonians are not uh, in darkness to be surprised like a thief. And they know the seasons and the times of uh, this coming of the Lord as a thief in the night. And this is uh, also to be true with the people of God today, with us who understand the seasons of the Lord and we understand the signs of the Lord. So when we know the signs and 
the seasons, we will not be surprised. For knowing them in keeping the seasons will make us people who are well rehearsed, well informed for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's another good example. I want us to go to uh, Revelation 3, 1 to 3. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things, says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect, what? Perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Take note of that. If, uh, therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So notice that if you don't watch, if you're not vigilant, if you are not a person who is aware, uh, or you are a, a person without understanding, you're not keeping up with prophetic times. You are not keeping up with the times and the seasons. Why? Because you're too busy with other things. You're not thinking of the coming of the Lord. So if you are that busy, you don't have time to watch. Well, Jesus will come for you like a thief in the night. And there's something I want you to notice here. If we do not keep watch, uh, Jesus coming will be like a thief that will cause, a not, cause us not to know the hour of His coming. We can actually know. Sabi niya, you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Okay? But... Uh, when you talk about hour, it can be 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Uh, Jesus did not tell the specific hour. But the point here is that you will understand the season. You will be able to know that this coming is very well. And I can tell you very much that we are nearing the hour of the Lord's returning. So can the other way be true? That if we keep watch, we will not be surprised by the thief because we will be able to know the times and the seasons of his coming. As he said, Jesus, uh, Jesus said, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So the other way is true. If we keep watch, we are vigilant. We are uh, watching uh, prophetic events and times and we are studying we will not be surprised by the thief because we will be able to know the times and the seasons of his coming. People who sleep are not aware of the hour of the night, right? They are ignorant of the events happening. Therefore, it is very important for us to watch the oaths and, uh, the, and observe the Moedim. The oaths, signs of His appearing, and the Moedim of God talking about His divinely appointed times. So I want you to please consider the words of Jesus in relation uh, to oaths. Matthew twenty four thirty. At the time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Take note of this. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man, the oath of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. So, he even uh, mentioned about this sign. I really don't know what this exact uh, sign will be, but we need to be watchful, right? We need to be uh, especially watchful of the, uh, the cosmic things happening in the skies because uh, hindi yan gawa ng tao. It's all uh, been designed by God. So likewise, before I end, we are to relate the following scriptures with the sense of appearing tied up to the meaning of oaths. 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 
in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. In view of his appearing, as you are taking the time to watch, to uh, look at uh, the signs that God is uh, giving, we are very near the coming of the Lord. We need to be looking at things in view of His appearing. So, dapat ganun tayo. We always had, uh, have to look at uh, things happening in our lives and in the world, in our church, in view of His returning. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Now, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will Award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for His appearing. Okay, remember, oath has to do with appearing. There is something that is appearing. That's why signs and signals and warnings are given. So this is the same in in view of His appearing. All who longed for His appearing, Hebrews nine twenty eight. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many and He will appear a second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are eagerly waiting for Him. So the appearance of the Lord, or the appearing rather of the Lord. So see Paul had this in his heart. Look at all of his writings. I believe and every writing of Paul, every letter that he wrote, he always mentioned about the coming of the Lord. Study it and you will um, be able to see. Simula po sa mga pag-write niya sa Romans until uh, the last, uh, script, uh, the last uh, uh, scripture that he had written. Lahat yan may connection. Somewhere in his writing may connection sa appearing ng ating Panginoon. So, since Jesus is about to appear, there will be signs, there will be omens, there will be uh, warnings about His coming, and therefore we are not to be ignorant of it. For if we are ignorant and we are not watchful, we will be surprised at the coming of the thief. So let us all be active. Let us all be people who are uh, awake and not sleeping. Amen? So I hope that you have learned something this afternoon and we'll continue talking about this next uh, time. Next uh, Monday, I will talk about the principle of the thief in the night. Another way to look at the thief in the night other than there is a robber. Uh, actually, that is the first analogy, but there is another one that is related in the temple of God. So, uh, watch for that this uh, coming uh, Monday. So, mag pray po tayo. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you, Lord God, that you are opening our eyes to understand these things. And may we be aware with uh, signs and seasons uh, that uh, are very much given in the scripture so that we will not be ignorant of your returning and we will not be caught uh, in surprise uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns as a thief in the night. We thank you, God. We bless you and we honor you for this understanding in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. He is just so good. He is just so marvelous. Praise the Lord. So again, I like to remind everybody to be faithful with your tithes and offerings. It's always a, uh, this portion is always a time to remind you that um, we must be faithful with our tithes, with our givings to God. And in this way, the blessings of God will faithfully come unto us. Praise the Lord. And don't forget, sa uh, ating pong weekend, that uh, we are to be serving the Lord. And uh, by the way, he announced ko po that this Sunday, February 21, at 3 p.m., we will be having a general assembly. And I want everybody please to come. I will have a great announcement that will cause all 
the people of Praise Revival Center to rejoice. There is something good that had happened to us just this week and last week. And I will tell you about that. Please be there. Plus, I will obviously uh, teach everybody. It's nice to uh, have this uh, general assembly meeting. So keep in touch, keep in tune with the link that will be uh, placed on our uh, Facebook account. And all the ministries uh, in the chat room, we will paste all the links for the meeting. Please be there, okay? I have a very important announcement, very, very important announcement to everybody, which will cause you to really celebrate of the goodness of our Father in heaven. Amen? So, uh, let's uh, get ourselves ready to pray. And those of you uh, who cannot come to bring your tithes and offerings here, again, these are the infos of how you can give by GCash or by way of online banking or online transfer. Praise God. So, magpray po tayo. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for your love and your goodness and faithfulness to us. Thank you for this word that we have received. And I know that you want us to be people who are always watchful, not people who are uh, sleeping, but always active and uh, longing for your returning. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. May you be with us this weekend. May you bless everybody and may you Go with us in the coming week. Once again, protect us from evil, from uh, fire, from earthquakes, and uh, from this COVID-19. Keep us all safe. Keep your people safe. Even, Lord God, those uh, of our frontliners who will receive the vaccine, may you protect them from the adverse uh, effects of uh, this vaccine, Lord. Keep us all safe. And may Jehovah bless you and keep you. May Jehovah make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Jehovah lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His shalom both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. The Lord's blessings be upon everybody and shalom.